match is going on over on the legacy tables. Ben Friedman's blue black control is facing off against Spencer Garnier playing Grixis Delver. And in the standard seat, we have Frank Scarin's blue white mid range versus Chris Anderson's blue red control. Both these decks, uh, you know, I'm not sure what players expect. That these were what players are expecting to play against this weekend. They're both metagaming. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the gurus living up to their name. And then uh, interesting decks on the other side of the table as well. All right, so Spicklemeyer is going to start here on a island. I think we actually have a different match. Hold on a second. Yeah, we're going to move over to the modern match here. This is standard. So uh, give us a second to get ready to. There we go. We have Jim Davis and Clay Spicklemeyer here. Spicklemeyer on the play. Cycle Street Wraith, Shocks, cast Inquisition of Kozlek down to 16. And Watery Grave Inquisition, typically indicative of the Grixis Shadow build. No Snapcast from Aegis here, though. Jim's hand a one lander. He's got a Mountain and a Faithless Looting. Outside of that, three Stinkweed Imps, Cathartic Reunion, and Prized Amalgam. Taking care of that Faithless Looting is real nice. Yeah, this hand was really hoping to play turn one Mountain Faithless Looting. I can't imagine Clay taking anything else. Mm -hmm. Jim's hand doesn't do anything. The hand's quite strong. It's certainly a keep, but it's a lot weaker now. Well, if, if Clay has a follow-up discard spell for that Cathartic Reunion, Jim may not be able to cast anything. Right. He draws Insolent Neonate. That was a very strong draw. Yes. One mana discard outlet, uh, pretty much exactly what he's looking for here. It's less good at drawing that second land, which he very well might need in this matchup. Yeah, I was going to say, he does still need another land, but at least this is castable. It is Insolent Neonate from Jim. Go back over to Spicklemeyer. It's interesting, right, because Discard has a is pretty medium against Dredge. It has with a few spots. exceptions. Yeah, you know, like this was a great discard spell. A lot of times there's horrible discard spells too. It is certainly <laughs> better here than it often is in Legacy. And Clay is gonna pass the turn. You notice that he has stubborn denial in his hand. It looks like he is hedging against Jim drawing a land for that cathartic reunion. Mm -hmm. He's not at a low enough life total yet where he's able to actually deploy a Death Shadow. You know, even if he cracks his fetch land, finds a chalk land, he'd still be at 13. And casting a Tarmogoyf has lower upside than countering the Cathartic Reunion. Life from the Loam, the draw from Jim. If he gets a second land, his hand is quite good. Mm -hmm. Neonate will swing one. Let's see if Jim's going to fish for that land. He is not. He'll just pass. Hey, he's got a clock going. <laughs> <laughs> well, Clay will help a bit. You know, you assume Clay will add some more damage points of his own. That attack for one does make it so Clay can dispatch a Death Shadow this turn and leave up Stubborn Denial. And that is a real thing against the Death Shadow deck. You, you have times here players say you don't want to chip shot them. You don't want to deal damage until you're killing them. And this is one of the reasons. By, by doing that extra point of damage, Jim has actually opened up some lines for Clay. Mm hmm it is frequently true that the dredge deck does kill with conflagrate, and the chip shots can matter, but uh, certainly for this turn, it looks like this did benefit Clay more than yeah. it benefited Jim. I mean, Jim might have assumed, hey, Clay's going to have another fetch land or a shock land. He's going to put himself low enough anyway, but it turns out none of that was true. Clay didn't have a land. He gets to cast the 1-1 one -one shadow now, and he'll just pass with Stubborn Denial up. Jim trying to decide, does he want to use the Neonate? I don't know if there's any reason to end step versus main phase of it. Yeah. It always makes sense to wait for your free effects unless there's something that changes otherwise. Now, Jim does draw a land. It's his copy of Dakmore Salvage. So that come, enters the battlefield tapped. So the question is actually whether or not Jim wanted to naturally draw for this turn. Because if he, he neonates okay. there, he gets to dredge before he goes to his draw step. He could potentially dredge again, depending on what he mills over. Jim plays the salvage and passes the turn. Two and, copies uh, of Dakmore Salvage. Had Jim activated the Neonate, the Salvage would have been dredged over. He could at least dredge that, hit his land drop here. I assume that long term, what he really wants to find is a green source, not so much the Salvage. Well, yeah, I mean, if he can get a Cathartic Reunion off, it's a really powerful hand he has. Mm -hmm. Where he, can, he gets to discard a Dredger and one of these Stinkweed Imps, he gets to discard the Prized Amalgam. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to like there. Yep. 
And that's part of the card that Clay can't even counter. Jim will always get to discard these cards. Draw from Clay looks like it was Traverse the Ulfenwald. That'll give him another land, which with five sick cards in hand, make that six cards Clay may be interested in. Just three card types in the graveyard, though. He's not terribly interested in a basic. Yeah, he'll just pass the turn. Interesting game here. The dredge deck isn't dredging, and the Death Shadow deck isn't attacking. Both. <laughs> <laughs> See Jim drawing a copy, another copy of Life in the Loam. You know, even if you counter Cathartic Reunion here, that's still upside for Jim, just discarding two of these cards. Mm -hmm. He's got five dredgers in hand. This is the amusing thing about the fail rate of the decks in the non-rotating formats. Standard decks not doing their thing it usually means meaningfully missing land drops or making too many land drops. But the games just end up being very strange and modern in Legacy. Jim says go. End step clay. Fatal pushes the insolent neonate. In response, Jim discards Stinkweed Imp and naturally draws. Yeah, it, it a third low. <laughs> seems to me that Jim is very invested in finding that green mana source so he can start casting life from the loam at some point. Another fatal push drawn by Clay. Now he'll cast Traverse the Open Vault. Yeah, that's an instant, so now he can find whatever he wants. Fetch land would be pretty good here. Yeah, and that's what he's going to find. Wants to take a lot of damage, so he'll fetch and shock down to nine. And that's why he was waiting, not finding a basic. Um, Wanting to actually grow his Death Shadow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the problem with Clay's setup so far was not that he doesn't have enough mana to cast his spells. It's that his Death Shadow was a 1-1. One, one. And well, more importantly, with that Death Shadow growing up to a 4-4, four, four, Stubborn Denial is now just a hard negate. And the, before Jim getting one more land would have meant Cathartic Union would resolve, that's no longer the case. Right. So Clay deals four, Jim goes down to 16. Let's see, three loams and two imps from Jim. And Jim with seven cards in hand, he's entering natural discard territory. That's often a very powerful position for the legacy builds of this deck. But Jim, again, he really needs to find green mana to make this life from the loam engine happen, to leverage potential conflagrates down the road. He also doesn't have a second red source. Uh, so he couldn't even flash back a conflagrate if one were to produce itself in his graveyard. The strength of modern dredge involves generating bloodgast, narcomoeba, prized amalgams. Well, here is a land for Jim. It's a copy of Ered Mesa. Turn too late in a lot of ways. He's, his Cathartic Union still can't resolve. Mm -hmm. This does solve his problem of needing to find green mana eventually. What if he just starts casting Stinkweed Imps as blockers? I mean, Death Shadow doesn't trample, and we did mention Clay doesn't have Team or Battle Rage in the list. Mm -hmm. so there are a number of removal spells that can get out of the way, but it is a reasonable play for Jim. Yeah, you know, Fatal Push needs help to do it. Mm -hmm. See Jim fetch shocking down to 13. And yeah, I think we're going to see some blockers. It's gonna, just going to be a hard cast Stinkweed Imp. And now that he has the green mana source on following turns, he will be able to yeah. dredge. Take uh, hopefully start finding those Narc Amoebas, Amalgams, what have you. Yeah, take that, Stubborn Denial. Here's a 1-2 for 3 with, <laughs> with basically Death Touch. It's old, old Death Touch. It, tr it triggers, but it's the same, same basic idea. <laughs> This card from original Ravnica printed before Death Touch had been turned into a keyword. You'd, you'd see this on creatures written out as the full sentence. Some older ones you would see at the end of Combat too. There's been some mm -hmm. strange iterations yeah, of this one. Yeah, that's how Gorgons would work. Yeah. Right, dude? <laughs> <laughs> They'd turn you to stone after you're done fighting them. That creature died of complications from Death Touch. Yeah, they poisoned you. <laughs> you know, yeah, maybe you fought them, but then, then when you got home, the poison killed you. Another fetch, traverse for a fetch land, fetch for a dual land, come into play untapped for clay. His death shadow grows to a 7-7. Seven, seven. Also, he's turned on revolt, which, if he has another fatal push, will be very important here. Mm -hmm. It looks like uh, an abrupt decay in the hand, and I want to say another fatal push as well. Yeah, he'll use fatal push on the imp. Blocker's nice. gone. A swing for 7 from death shadow. That puts Jim down to 6. That abrupt decay in hand to remove a blocker is looking very good right now. Yeah, if all Jim's able to do is imp again, Clay has that covered. He needs to get some Narc Amoebas off a of dredge here. Yeah, I mean, he's going to need a good dredge, right? Because you, 
even a conflagrate's not gonna work because of that stubborn denial. Right. Here is Stinkweed Imp, dredging five for Jim. Blood Crypt, Arid Mesa, <laughs> Blood Seed Meyer, Life from the Loam, Cathartic Reunion. The fourth Life from the Loam that's is not what Jim was looking for. That's where the lands were. <laughs> Draw Stinkweed Imp. And he has ways to dredge more, but I think all of Jim's plays are covered by the Stubborn Denial in Clay's hand. Yeah. And the Imp covered by the Abrupt Decay otherwise. Right. He may not have a way out. Death Shadow just punishingly good. I, this is, I believe, the third time we've had on camera this weekend. The deck has yet to lose a game on camera. This is and where... This, this is what it feels like, you know, when I've watch this deck playing modern it's so good this is what it feels like playing the deck yeah <laughs> death shadow is super good it's like yeah this is the deck that's supposed to beat it when i started and sometimes it does but sometimes it doesn't when i started casting death shadows my only question was why did it take us so long to discover these fair shadow death shadow decks right. it's so good well traverse wasn't around for a while well, even the non-traverse builds oh like grixis yeah, yeah. Was fetch shock thoughtsies death shadow is extremely powerful We were a bit distracted by the old, you know, the turn two ends. kills build. Yeah. <laughs> we were distracted by Monastery Swift Spear was a distraction. Yeah. Here's Life from the Loam from Jim. Clay might even let that one resolve. Jim gets three cards. There's no real reason to fight over this one. And Clay wisely doesn't. And Clay has demonstrated discipline with his counter spells previously in the tournament. We saw him playing against Andrew mm -hmm. Shout on Storm, and there was a juicy spell he declined to counter. Jim goes to the cutter, Cathartic Reunion, and then Clay pulls the trigger. Jim will scoop the cards, and game one goes over to Spicklemire and Death Shadow. Mm -hmm. Impressive patience there by Clay, and that will, will get him the win. He's an up-and-comer for sure. I've played against Clay. He's a very disciplined player. So with that, that is a actual sweep for their team. All three matches, it's games completing game one at the same time. So Spencer Garnier, Grixis Delver wins game one, and Chris Anderson on Blue Earth Control takes the game. So a, the metagame gurus now have quite the hole to dig themselves out of. Mm -hmm. And as we go to sideboards, things are not looking great for Jim. Uh, the upgrades look like they benefit Clay. Yeah, so let's start with Clay's upgrades. I, I see those three Nile spell bonds on top, and I'm already very into those. Jim's a graveyard deck, of course. But what else do you like in the match? Uh, those are really the big ones. There's a reasonable argument for getting that Snapcaster Mage in there just to get a little bit more value to make sure that you can leverage your interactive spells properly. Uh, you're not too into having things like Liliana the Val in this matchup, so he wants to get that stuff out of his main deck. Frees up a little bit of space that he has to fill. You know, something like Maelstrom Pulse that can clean up, you know, Narc Amoebas, maybe there's some merit in that. Yeah, uh, that spell is going to have some really good spots. And sometimes Jim's just going to have three prized amalgams, and buying a turn will be enough to get in for Lethal with a Death Shadow. And then we go to sideboard for Jim Davis. We have two Abrupt Decays, two Maelstrom Pulse. Uh, those ones are for sure coming in here. There's ways to deal with Death Shadow. Lightning Axe is a little more dicey. It's not always going to be able to kill the Shadow, but it's always a discard outlet, uh, so that's well enough. Uh, Tarmogoyf will frequently get up to at least six toughness in this kind of matchup. So the Axe, it, again, it is dicey. There's a reasonable argument for Knot of the Bone, because again, Clay has to win this through combat damage, and gaining a large amount of life can slow him down significantly. Mm -hmm. And Vengeful Pharaoh is actually a pretty nice one. Yeah, Vengeful Pharaoh, there's a card that if it's in your graveyard, it, it basically kills a creature after it hits you once. Right. Which Death Shadow is going in on one creature a lot of the time. So mm -hmm. uh, that part definitely makes sense from Jim Davis's deck. Yeah, if they're not able to kill you in one shot, the Pharaoh does a lot of work in slowing them down. So now for Jim Davis, the captain of the metagame gurus, he was the player's champion back in 20. 15 uh, and has been captain of the team really ever since uh, though though the crew has changed this year ben friedman and frank scaren new additions as teammates very strong pickups at that yeah, scaren for a long time known for his limited prowess but uh, he's no slouch at constructed He 
I see up. Yeah, Ben Freeman, a player with a, a ton of strength in the S. Really, he well, he's been on a lot of pro tours. Also, in the Star City Invitationals, one of really the strongest players at at the big events. Five Invitational top eights. Yeah, that's huge. Finalist of the season three Invitational last year. All right. Jim's still shuffling up for a second game. He's going going to have to win the next two. Remember Star City's games, we have Star City Games Game Night. That is exclusive pins and tokens from artists here at Star City Games given away all around the country for just for playing local tournaments at your local stores. This month we're giving away the Imperius Perfect token. That's our the Elf Warrior token that also is a is a cat. Next month we're gonna be giving away the Murderous Red Carp token. So you can pick that one up at stores near you. You can find them on starcygames.com slash game night. Now for store owners who want to join this promotion, if you get up signed up signed up now, we can get you signed up in time for the July propo promotion, which is going to be the goose of St. Traft. We can see that one coming that one coming up in just a couple of months as a first look at it this weekend. The goose is loose. Phrase often spoken about nimble mongoose many years ago now extends to Geist of St. Draft. Yeah, so find out, find a game night store near you, starcitygames.com slash game night. All right, so game number two will put Jim Davis on the play. Last game, he was really hurt by an Inquisition of Kozlak. Kept a one land faithless looting hand with a ton of dredgers, had his faithless looting inquisitioned, and it slowed him down by two, three turns. More oh, than he could come back that, from. Yeah. Hugely impactful. And that's not the kind of hand that you can realistically mulligan. He just kind of had everything that he wanted. He had live draws to get out of his position from there. If he hit a land, he had the Cathartic Reunion as well. And we might have a pause here in the action um, <laughs> for the local event. Players calling a judge here. Um, we will check with judges right now. Some kind of fire alarm set off in the building. So that's going to be investigated, and we will... Bear with us here as we find out what's going on. Attention players, we are on the phone with the menu. We will be getting back to you very, very shortly about if we are going to be moving out. In the event we tell you we need to evacuate, all current games will cease to exist. You will have to throw the logins. So players are being told to evacuate the venue and that games in progress cease to exist. Right, so what that means is the game scores will remain the same. The, any game started, like you see the legacy game there between Friedman and Garnier, that game will be shuffled up and restarted. Uh, one thing is when players, you have to evacuate a building. Um, we don't ask players to leave their cards on the table, mm. uh, especially not their legacy decks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's not going to happen. So we're going to preserve these game scores. Players, we have confirmation this is a false alarm. This is a false alarm. Uh, we have been informed, all right, we're, we're learning this as you, we have informed it, there may not be an evacuation as it is a false alarm, it was identified. So in that situation, the games will actually be maintained and we're going to proceed as normal. But the good news is that the alarm is still buzzing. Yeah, that, <laughs> even if it's a false alarm, it definitely is, is functioning. Right, a functioning alarm, just a false one. And now, uh, so, looks like we will be uh, having a game here. Jim's cards still on the table. Sure. Looks like a mulligan here for Clay Spicklemeyer on the Death Shadow end of things. <laughs> and po post sideboard, good chance that Clay is aggressively mulliganing to try to find some of these Nile spell bombs. Those can be hugely impactful in this match. Yeah, absolutely. Three of those on the board. Um, so he does have those three pieces of graveyard hate. All right, and it looks like Clay's going to keep. So six cards for Spicklemeyer. 
and a scry to the bottom. We're going to start the game on Jim Davis. No opportunity for him to get thought seized this game. Jim, turn one and use Scalding Tarn for stomping ground. See if he can maybe get that Faithful Suiting out before it's taken this time. Yeah. And Jim did keep on seven, which is always very scary for your dredge opponent. And particularly, this is one thing about the modern version. It's capable of casting a lot of spells. It, it has mana sources and a lot of very good sideboard cards. So it's not just dredging. It usually has some way to interact with your game plan, some way to interact with your interaction. All right, Faith is looting in turn one for Jim Davis. So draw two and discard. Picks up a copy of Golgari Thug and another land. So his discards look to be the Thug and a Conflagrate. So he'll have his dredge set up for next turn. Yeah, and this is uh, close to an ideal start for Davis here, depending how he dredges from here. Now looking at Clay's hand, we have... Mishra's Bobble, he'll do target himself. That's He has a fetch land in hand, so it'll help him decide whether to fetch now or, or to use a shock land instead. Mm -hmm. Well, then he'll just use Overgrown Tomb. That lets him keep that top card of the deck. Yeah, found one he likes. Or maybe not. Traverse the Ulfen Vault will get cast finding a land for him. <laughs> Didn't have so. a fetch land. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to fetch a green source. Something like that. So a Swamp for Clay in hand, and we're going to go back to Jim Davis. He draws a card off the bobble. Dredging four for Jim. Stinkweed Imp, Insolent Neonate, Deck More Salvage, and Prized Amalgam. So one Amalgam in the yard, and two more dredgers for Jim. Yeah, that's a fine find. Has another Faithless Looting as well, so this should convert into more value. Yeah, I'll start by dredging Stinkweed Imp. That's a dredge of five. Land, Life from the Loam, Land, Narc Amoeba, and Insolent Neonate. So that Narc Amoeba is going to go a trigger when he's done with the resolving this looting. Mm -hmm. That'll give him this Amalgam back as well. And second draw has Life from the Loam, Dakmore Salvage, or the top card of his deck to choose from. Mm -hmm. He'll pick Dakmore Salvage. So that's a dredge of two more cards. And dredges a Cathartic Reunion and a land. So now he has to discard two to finish the Faithless Looting. Looks like he's going to put the Thug and the Stinkweed Imp back into the graveyard. Taking the Salvage suggests that Jim's plan on the following turn is to flash back one of these Faithless Lootings. He already has a Blood Crypt in hand. This way, he makes sure that he hits that land drop. Yeah. Salvage tap this turn, Blood Crypt next turn. Narc Amoeba into play. Prized Amalgam waiting to come back on Jim's end step. He'll play the Dakmore Salvage as his land drop and then get his 3-3. And we are over to Clay's second turn. You're right, though. Jim does have untapped land in hand and now two copies of Faithless Looting in the graveyard. Mm -hmm. This game is looking much better for Jim. Right, for Clay, he hasn't made a threat yet. He cycles Street Wraith and makes Tarmogoyf here. Now, thanks to Jim's dredging, Tarmogoyf's got some good size to it. Artifact, sorcery, creature, land. Still missing on instant. Yeah, so it is just 4-5, but that's enough to block a prize to Malcolm. Yep. Let's go back over to Jim. Upkeep, he gets to go dredging again. Looks like he's going to pick Stinkweed Imp. Finds another Narc Amoeba prized amalgam. That's not bad. No, so Narc Amoeba is going to enter the battlefield. Prized amalgam. You see Jim turning it sideways, reminding himself that, yeah, that's about to come back. Mm -hmm. Abrupt decay in his hand as well. That's something they can just remove the Tarmogoyf and let Jim continue to attack. Yeah, so Jim's building a wide board. He has to be a little bit mindful about knocking Clay into a territory where he can cast a meaningful Death Shadow. So the wider his board gets, the less a Death Shadow matters. Right. 
A lot of Jim's free creatures, though, don't make great blockers. Bloodgast can't block. Prize Amalgams enter the battlefield tapped. It's really just Narc Amoeba that gives him free blockers. Right. So Jim's going to flash back Faithless Looting after he makes the third land drop. Continues to dredge. First with Stinkweed Imp. Which puts a Loman four lands into the yard. And then Golgari Thug, which puts a Bloodgast and another prized amalgam into the yard. Now, the second prized amalgam is not actually going to enter the battlefield. It didn't see that first Narc Amoeba enter the play. Mm -hmm. It won't enter on Jim's turn. Right. But the first amalgam will trigger the second amalgam. Right. And it'll show up on Clay's turn. Uh, yeah, the end of Clay's turn, it'll come back. Jim discarding two. Going to put some dredgers back in the graveyard. And we should see how Jim manages chip damage here. He's actually just going to pass the turn and bring back Amalgam. He had the option there to hit with one of the Narc Amoebas, but chose against it. Currently, if Clay has fetch land, he can fetch shock, and he'd be at 13. If Jim deals one damage, and the maximum he'd be able to deal is two, that makes Death Shadow a play on this turn in and of just having a fetch land. Go after Clay. Right now, he's managed to not take attacks from Jim, but he still has to figure out how he's going to deal damage. And here's a way. Tarmogoyf will swing. Still a 4-5. Though Jim's milling lot, he's actually... His main deck does not have any instance to add to the grave. It's just creature, sorcery, land. So he's not going to help Clay very much on, on growing the Tarmogoyf. Mm -hmm. Clay has had a fatal push since his opener. He's inviting Jim to put all three creatures in front of the Tarmogoyf. That's enough power if nothing happens to sure. kill the Goyf. Though, that's not a huge loss for Jim. He ends up losing the Narc Amoebas, but he's already got a prized amalgam on the way back. He has blood gas in his graveyard, life from the loam that he can dredge to make sure he hits a land drop. It looks like Jim is going to triple block. Yeah, all three in front. That's too enticing, really, for Clay. Also, that instant will grow his Tarmogoyf to a, to a 5 6. Mm. And Jim's only concern is with actually dying. He's going to make up this card advantage pretty easily. Right. The, the, the prize amalgams will come back uh, on their own. Narc Amoebas aren't going to come back. And you see, in Clay's hand, it looks like two fatal pushes. Maelstrom Pulse, another Tarmogoyf. Clay cracks the fetch. This will enable the play of Fatal pushing the prize amalgam not involved in combat. Then as Goyf just a 5-6, eats all three creatures. Sure. Now those amalgams will come back already guaranteed. You see there's that prized amalgam coming back on Clay's end step. It will trigger the two amalgams again. Mm -hmm. But you're right. It means that Jim has three fewer points of damage when it comes back to his own turn. Right. So here is Fatal Push on the prized amalgam. That one goes down. Goyf grows to a 5-6 and takes care of all three creatures. And then Clay adds a second time. Goyf says go on, on Spicklemeyer's end step. Jim gets one 3-3 three, three back. And that makes it so that the others will come back at the end of Jim's turn here. Metagame Gurus, though, are on the board over in Legacy. It's Ben Friedman with blue-black control evening things up against Spencer Garnier. Dredge of Stinkweed Imp from Jim. Dredges five, puts a conflagrate into the graveyard. Mm, Jim did not have one of those yet. Oh, no, yeah, actually, that's the yeah, second one. Right. You know, with two conflagrates and, oh, yikes. Ooh, two hours is great, but this is better. Yeah, Maelstrom Pulse taking care of both Tarmogoyfs. Now Jim is just in a commanding position on the battlefield. Yeah, Clay actually had set up a really nice board to kind of race Jim, uh, but he wasn't expecting one of the two sideboard Maelstrom Pulses, and that did... Just a huge number mm -hmm. on Clay. Yeah, previously in the tournament, Jim had some problems because he did not have Dark Blast in his 75, and the Maelstrom Pulse is kind of the odd duck, but right there you see its value. Yeah, so Jim, as Jim takes the lead in this game and Clay scoops up the cards, his teammates do the same. All three game twos go the way of the metagame gurus, and it looks like we are going to have a trio of deciding game threes. Okay. This is exciting stuff. So those two Maelstrom Pulses are coming out of the sideboard for Jim Davis. 
looks like that had caught Clay Spicklemeyer off guard. Mm -hmm. uh, might have even had a stubborn denial in hand, but did not really feel like he had to protect them. Uh, it won Jim the game. I don't think Clay will play into it a second time. Right, and that was a bad spot for Clay one way or the other. If he just has the one Tarmogoyf, he doesn't have meaningful pressure. Right. With two Tarmogoyfs, you think he might even be able to race these three threes. Mm -hmm. With one, probably not. Right. So we go back to the sideboards then for the players. So, yeah, and you see on Clay's face, yeah, he, he got got there. Uh, he did not see either of his three Nile spell bombs. Certainly there in the deck. Uh, knowing that Jim is playing cards like Maelstrom Pulse, um, I guess the question is, did the Stubborn Denials ever come out for, J for Clay? And if so, do they come back in? If they were out, they're certainly back in. Um, it, it's able to catch Cathartic Reunion early if it matters. There's some windows where catching life from the loam is pretty good. And uh, having it as an option for Conflagrate, I, I can't imagine that Clay would board this card out. Uh, but it should certainly be in for game three. Yeah, I guess he has a, things like Coligan's Command. He already has a lot of cards to get rid of without having to go for that one. Mm -hmm. We mentioned before Jim Davis, the captain of the metagame gurus. He was a 2015 Players Champion from Long Island, New York. He has 11 open top eights, including two open wins. Three invitational top eights uh, on top of that. Also, uh, a common streamer right now streaming with metagame gurus and over on Twitch TV. Mm -hmm. Plays some of the music of his band, Teach Me Human. As we go back into the match, Clay will be back on the play. So discard spells for Faithless Looting are live once again. That was uh, very important for game one. And still looking to produce a Nihil spell bomb. As, uh, game two, he was, wasn't able to interact with Jim on any meaningful level. Yeah, well, we saw that Faithless Looting got, thought, got Inquisition the first game. Jim got to have one on the second game. Jim kept two seven-card hands, which is uh, above expectancy for Dredge. <laughs> for Dredge, for sure. You know, on Clay's side, we see Tarmogoyf actually doing a lot of work in this matchup, and it shows why Jim may have boarded in Maelstrom Pulse. Uh, a 3-4 on the ground can cause problems for Dredge. It just gets in the way of prized amalgam very easily. And when it gets to be a 5-6, <laughs> which is not terribly difficult, it punches for a lot of damage. Yeah, it, it's, it may be the better of these creatures in this matchup. Um, because Clay is not a team or battle rage version, I feel like he has to play this control game. A lot of times when you see this matchup, maybe, you know, Jim, we talked about how Narc Amoeba is one of his better blockers. If Clay was a team or battle rage build of Death Shadow, um, that can easily get got. You can yep. get by that. You know, you get a 7 7 Shadow, you block it, you double strike trample through it. Um, because he doesn't have that available, Jim can actually do this, you know, a chump block and race game plan. Mm -hmm. The Death Shadow deck surprisingly able to fulfill this control role. When you just outsize your opponent, you force them to do a lot of stuff, and when they take that turn off, when they can't block with their amalgams, you can easily assemble lethal there. Yeah, well, isn't that the thing about this deck? It, it's, it's a Jund deck with this real, like, explosive element to it. Jund would frequently thought seize you and kill your guys, and then, you know, maybe on turn six, they'd take care of you. This deck does the same thing, but does it on turn four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mid-range builds of Jund are really Graveyard Hate or Bust against Dredge. And there's some kinds of Graveyard Hate that aren't going to be enough for that build. But uh, the Death Shadow deck's much more capable of just kind of interacting with the creatures. Four Tarmogoyf is nice, but four Shadow to back it up and four Traverse to have higher access is much better. Six card hand for Clay. He was on six last time as well. Looks like this one's going to be a keep. And Jim keeps seven again. What's it like? Yeah. Well, it's interesting, right? Jim's deck doesn't care about, you know, it's playing on a different axis. And actually, Clay's deck, it can do fine on six as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so underway for our third deciding game here in Modern. For the Death Shadow player, he's going to start on a turn one thought seize. Let's see if he can catch Jim off guard. Ooh. One land again for Jim, but two faithless lootings. <laughs> <Yep. Ha> <laughs> he's learned from the first game. So, <laughs> <laughs> Looks like, no, there's two lands. It's uh, Steam Vents is in the mix and oh, a Skull right. Link Okay. He had him separated. So he leaves Jim. Man, this hand is so good against thought seize. Uh, with two lands, a faithless looting, a cathartic reunion, 
Stinkweed Imp, and then Bloodgast. Mm. Yeah, this hand is extremely powerful to the point where Clay really has to rely on Jim doing some bad dredging. Yeah, he's and he'll need a Nile spell bomb to, mm. to beat this. Uh, you know, he could get a second Thoughtseize, and it's still not enough. Right. It does look like there is one in Clay's hand, however. Yeah. So if there is a Nile spell bomb, I guess we'll see when he chooses to use it. Mm -hmm. And he still has to kill Jim. Now keep in mind, with how Cathartic Reunion works, it's discard then draw. So there actually isn't a window where Clay can stop Jim from dredging. Well, Clay also has a second thought seize. So he can at least Ooh, okay. tag the Reunion, land the spell bomb, and try to minimize damage that way. Jim will be able to dredge up his draw step. Yeah, so Jim plays Faith of Looting, draws two discards too, discards a Bloodgast, but didn't play a land to bring back Bloodgast. Isn't that Thought Seize takes care of the Cathartic Reunion. Now Jim is on, on, on all lands. And Clay is going to take advantage of that really big right now. Yeah, leave to, okay, take all your cards that aren't lands. Play Nile Spellbone. And he won't get to draw a card off it, but I don't think he cares. Yeah, just going for this right away is real strong. Uh, you could wait until Jim dredges, maybe get some extra value that way, but that's a little bit <laughs> yeah. greedy. You see Clay immediately into the yard. No, no, no. Those are all gone. And Jim, mono lands now. He's going to have to come back for multiple reasons because over in Legacy, we have a conclusion to the match. It is Spencer Garnier on Grixis Delver beating Ben Friedman. So Jim draws a dredger. It's life from the loam. Helping to get back even more lands. Yeah. I mean, that one's kind of an ended unto itself, but it's a slow one. Dredge 3 is considerably less powerful than Dredge 5. Yeah, you see Ben Friedman now next to Jim checking out the exile as the, the legacy players have moved their attention over to the modern match. And Clay also has a follow-up Tarmogoyf among the two cards remaining in his hand. So he'll be able to turn the heat up pretty quick. Even though he exiled Jim's graveyard, he still has land sorcery artifact in his own. Yeah, you see Clay sp splitting his graveyard into two piles to count toward Delirium. That Thought Seize, though, is in the graveyard. Mm -hmm. Theros and Lorwyn, I like the split here from Clay. I think Clay. that's actually the yeah. reason for the two piles. They're just not the, the same Lorwyn card. The Lorwyn one is just the best card in that spread. <laughs> so it gets its own pile. I do like the Lorwyn art more. A lot of times I, a lot of times I actually go for the new art on my cards, but yes. uh, that's one. No, I just go with the art I like more, and I think a lot of times Magic's new art has been really good. The only one I make that I, I have the moon ponder over the fish ponder. You know, cause fish ponder implies you're like playing. I'm not creatures. playing Murphy. Yeah, <laughs> <playing Murfolk. laughs> yeah. So Jim cast loam, said go. Found a dredger and an amalgam. Yep. Clay played a time wife, passed back. Jim dredged three, found a Golgari thug, and prized amalgam. And Jim's going to continue fetching and dredging back that fetch land, getting lands out of his deck. See, he puts the land into play tapped. As if we play here as life from the loam, no reason to really take extra damage. Yeah, the rest of his hand is lands, so. Yeah, but he does want to continue to, to loam for maximum number of cards in case he flips over a conflagrate at some point here. Mm -hmm. He would have liked to have that abrupt decay in hand to deal with that Tarmogoyf. He can't have everything. So back to Clay. His Tarmogoyf is only currently... Well, priced Amalgam adds to it, so it is a 4-5. Uh, bad news, there's a tar five, fire six. in Clay's hand. <laughs> Ooh. That's an instant and a tribal. Yeah. Yeah, it is 5-6, so that it would go to 6-7 if he tar fires. I think 5-6. Okay. Tarmogoyf swings here. It's for 5. No tar fire first. Perhaps hedging around Stinkweed Imp. Yeah, he just passes Jim down to 11 on the hit. He'll dredge Golgari Thug. Clearing that chump blocker out of the way is also relatively significant. And Thug misses there. It finds land, land, Maelstrom Pulse, Insolent, Neonate. Now, the Golgari Thug could be a blocker. And has some interesting interactions of its own. You see Jim's going to cast it. So Golgari Thug, a 1-1 one, one for 2. When it's put in your graveyard, put target creature in your card in your graveyard on top of your library. It is not a May effect. Right. 
Now, if Jim had a stinkweed imp, he'd really like to put that one on top. But yeah. uh, Dredge 4 is also pretty reasonable. You see Clay looks like he's going to try to, he's going to fatal push away the blocker. If he does, Jim will have to put either Prize Amalgam or Insolent Neonate on top of his deck. Or Golgari Thug. He'll put the 1-1 one, one red card, the Insolent Neonate, on top of his deck. Right, now we have Clay on taps. Both players at 11. Time by 5-6. And the draw for Clay, a Death Shadow. Here's a swing, Jim, down to 6. Clay looking to set up for lethal next turn. He'll cast Death Shadow, leaving up that tar fire. This is a very powerful position for Spicklemeyer. Mm -hmm. Jim really wants to dredge into a Narc Amoeba, but even that just buys him some time. He's way short on cards in hand to try to assemble lethal conflagrates and right. shy the conflagrate as well. Here is Golgari Thug. It's going to mill four. First one's going to be Insolent Neonate. Here's three more. Faithless Looting, Maelstrom Pulse, Stinkweed Imp. Though he put a Faithless Looting in the yard, that opens the window for some powerful dredges here, but almost all of them will enter the battlefield tapped, right? Even if he finds prized amalgams, that's not really good enough. Mm -hmm. Jim's going to flash back Faithless Looting. Two draws, then two discards. First draw is Stinkweed Imp. Dredging five. We see Thug. Another Thug and another Stinkweed Imp. Plenty of dredgers, but no actual action. Nothing that comes into play. Mm -hmm. So he'll dredge another Stinkweed Imp. This one's going to have to hit. Stinkweed Imp, land, Cathartic Reunion, Insolent Neonate, Blood Gas. That's the only creature he has that can come back out of the graveyard, and that one can't block. That's a whammy. It, and it looks like uh, Jim's just going to be dead here. Yeah, uh, he does. He needed two blockers. He doesn't even have one. Mm -hmm. As he can make Golgari Thug. Right. And then Clay can kill it with Tarfire, kill Jim, and that's going to be the match. Yeah, Tarmogoyf will be a 6-7. Death Shadow staying a 2-2. Two, two. It's 8 damage. Jim's going to go to 5. Looks like he's going to try to make that blocker. But for the second time today, it's going to look on camera. The metagame gurus are going to fall short. That'll be bring them to 1 and 2 on the day. It brings them to... Nine and three on the tournament. So with three rounds to go, they're going to need a strong finish to top eight. But they're not out of the running yet. Yep. Still live, just a tighter spot. Now, for the team of Garnier, Spicklemeyer, and Anderson, this will move them to 10 and two. It's a very good position for top eight. Mm -hmm. Just a couple more wins. Yeah, and these guys have been impressive. This is their, they're now three and oh on camera. We saw them yesterday do very well to to have comeback wins on two different occasions, and it looks like there's going to be another win for the team. So on Modern and Legacy, they don't even need Chris Anderson's standard match. Yeah, really impressive stuff. And uh, matches like this, Clay had Niall Spellbomb in Game 3. That was